So welcome everyone. Thank you for inviting me to this debate format, which I think is a lot of fun. Um, let's see this one, right? So I have no disclosures, just that I'm, I'm just a pediatric surgeon, so we don't do these procedures in the thousands like I've seen in these talks this morning. Um, just to review the case really quickly, 14-year-old female, BMI of 50 with a pretty typical comorbidities these patients present with, and a pretty straightforward workup with a normal EGD and a patient who shows stable weight. So I think the first question is, do we need to offer weight loss surgery to this patient? And I, um, I would think everybody agrees that we, we need to go that route. And of course, this is under a you know, multidisciplinary teams, and it's not just like an easy answer, but, but I would agree that this patient needs weight loss surgery, mainly because most of the children with obesity will carry their obesity towards adulthood, and with that, all the comorbidities will continue to get worse. Now, I'm supposed to try to convince you in this next six minutes that, you know, we would probably recommend a sleep gastrectomy instead of a root and wide gastric bypass, and uh, I'll just show you some of the thoughts I have, some of the advantages I think the salute gastrectomy has over the ruin y gastric bypass, and uh, uh, we'll take it from there. So these are more of the technical advantages where uh, sleeve gastrectomy, as you all know, you resect the fundus and uh, decrease the levels of circulating ghrelin. There's no enteric anastomosis. There's no mesenteric defects. There's no vagal injury or foreign bodies uh, if you do things right. Uh, the operative time is much shorter when compared to the ruin y gastric bypass. is less expensive and technically is less challenging. Um, when you look at the operative uh, advantages and, and, and perioperative care, there's less readmission rate. It's more, you know, there's literature that you could read both ways, but most of the literature will show that there's less readmission rate for sleeve gastrectomies. There's less nutritional deficiencies, and I think that's one of the key things in adolescence because these are children. They're still within their neurological and musculoskeletal development. And uh, as you know, we have issues with compliance with adolescents taking medications and uh, having nutritional de deficiencies at that age is very, very uh, dangerous. There's less postoperative complications and more than anything, the devastating complication of short bowel syndrome that patients with ruin y gastric bypass can have in the long run. And overall, the weight loss, it's pretty significant for sleeve gastrectomies, and when you look at it in the long run, there's no major difference, uh, difference with the RU and Y. A few more advantages. Uh, these patients, as they lose weight, will uh, have significant resolution of comorbidities, and they can always be converted back to a RU and Y gastric bypass in case of weight regain, uh, or when they turn adults if they want to do things differently. This is something that we've seen over the past few years, um, and also working on the guidelines for sleeve gastrectomy, is that this procedure really allows us to expand the indications for weight loss surgery in certain patient populations. So syndromic obesity, developmental delay, autism, Down syndrome, psychiatric disorders, these were all conditions that used to be a contraindication for weight loss surgery, and with the um, spread of sleeve gastrectomy, more and more of these patients are beginning to you know, get the surgery, and uh, of course we have to go on a case-by-case -case basis, and, and we do run it by our ethics committee, but many of these patients have so bad diabetes and other comorbidities that they really need almost like a semi-urgent uh, obesity procedure, because otherwise they get very, very sick. So to conclude on the advantages, you know, the sleeve gastrectomy is the most common procedure in the U.S. in adolescents. Over the past few years, it's the most common procedure in the U.S. in adults, and not only in the U.S., but in the other, and, you know, pretty much the rest of the world. Um, it does have some disadvantages, and just like every procedure, you just have to outweigh risks and benefits, but there is a concern for reflux in the long run, uh, and that is true. Uh, the incidence varies in different studies you read, but this can be treated with medications, and if it gets to be very severe, it can be converted to a ruin Y. You can also gain weight again, uh, you know, over the next few years, and uh, that's why these patients need to be participating in an accredited program, have very close follow-up, and make sure they follow our guidelines. However, if they do gain weight, and now they're adults, they can always get converted back to a ruin Y gastric bypass. In the long run, you could also have a stricture of your sleeve, and I think this is very dependent on, on the learning curve and the technical aspects of the operation, but it's unfortunately you have 
a stricture in the long run, you can always go back and convert it to a ruin Y gastric bypass. Let me show you just a little bit of the evidence, which is not much, and, and li like you know, Tim was just saying, you know, the adult experience is overwhelming when, when we try to compare ourselves to them. And uh, this is the largest prospective study that was published in 2016, um, and it had 242 patients. And, and just you know, a few minutes ago, I was in a the talk they were presenting 1,200 patients. So it, it, we really are at a disadvantage with that. But this is, in perspective, the biggest study in children. And it was designed to assess the safety and efficacy of uh, weight loss surgery in adolescents. As you see in 2016, the patients that were enrolled, most of them had ruined white gastric bypass, 161 versus 67. But this study showed that the weight loss was very similar between the two uh, procedures. And of course, with the advantages of a shorter and easier uh, procedure. And it also showed that the comorbidities were resolved, most of them, with either procedure. And there were less nutritional deficiencies in sleep gastrectomy, not a lot, but iron more than anything, and uh, you know, transferring levels were different in both procedures. This is a more recent study that comes off about 56 centers that uh, enter their information into this database, the PCOR net network. And now they studied 544 adolescents with a mean BMI of 50. And now if you look at the numbers, now we're at 2018, two years later, the majority are sleeve gastrectomies compared to the Ruin Y. Ruin Y did have more weight loss at one year. As you see the numbers, there's a 3% difference. And believe it or not, that's a significant difference. It's all the stats and the games we play with the statistics. However, when we look at three and five years, there was no difference in the weight loss between the sleeve gastrectomy and ruin Y in adolescents. This is another very interesting study, which was also randomized. Um, they compared 72 patients, 36 in each arm, and they saw the same weight loss, and they focused on the hormonal effects, which I think is very important, because it's not just the mechanics of the surgery, it's called metabolic surgery, that there is a lot of hormonal effects and things that we still don't understand on how they lose or they don't lose weight. Um, but they both have similar hormonal effects. However, they saw that the ghrelin started to increase 12 months after the ruin Y, which is hard to explain. This is another study that also showed that hormonal effects for both the sleeve and the ruin Y are very similar. So sleeve gastrectomy would be, in my opinion, the way to go for adolescents. However, there are times when it may not be indicated, and uh, a ruin Y might be the way to go. And I, I think the cases with more severe levels of obesity are, um, you know, recent data shows that even though sleeve was always the first stage for extremely big patients, now the data is showing that you might as well do the one you really need at the beginning for the best weight loss. Patients who have severe reflux should not undergo sleeve gastrectomy because we will make it worse. And patients that have failed sleeve gastrectomies or severe reflux after sleeve, then that's another good indication for a ruin Y gastric bypass. So I would recommend sleeve gastrectomy in this case. And uh, more than anything, because adolescents are particularly vulnerable to behavior changes, and weight loss may not be as dramatic as you see in the ruin Y. Uh, but initial weight loss really gives them a good chance to change their habits, resolve the comorbidities, and live healthier lives, and always in the setting of a safer, easier, and simpler operation. Thank you.